Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well and keeping yourselves busy during the quarantine. In today's video we're going to be reviewing this little lens which is the Canon Macro Lens EFM 28mm f3.5 is stm and you may have noticed this lens in my ice photography video i've used it to take all the photos in that video and if you haven't seen it i'll link it in the description down below so let's get into the review is actually one of my favorites for the Canon's APS-C sized mirrorless cameras. The reason why I like it so much is because it is just such a versatile lens and you can really shoot from a completely different perspective than you normally would. At the moment this lens is £269 on Amazon which is similar to some of the other EFM lenses. As I said this is a very versatile lens and the reason for that is that it has two different modes. Here are some photo comparisons of the two modes. The first one is the macro mode which offers the one-to-one -one magnification ratio which means that the real life size of your subject is the same as what is being recorded by the sensor. You can use this mode for your regular shots too. The second mode on this lens is the super macro mode, which allows for up to 1.2 times magnification, which can enlarge your subjects beyond their real life size. However, in this mode, you no longer have access to the infinity focusing. So not only is this lens great for macro photography, you can also use it for just your everyday stuff like street photography and travel. The main benefit of this lens is that it is very sharp, especially if you set it to around f8. It also has minimal distortion and deals with chromatic aberrations really well. Here are a few examples of just how sharp this lens can be at different f-stops. And in this image over here you can see that the lens has minimal distortion. Notice how the lines in the corners are pretty much straight. However on the downside I feel like this lens is a little bit too short for a macro lens. The focal length of 28mm can feel just a little bit too short at times as I often have to be very close to my subject and then I end up bumping into it with the lens which can be very annoying obviously. This mainly happens on the super macro mode. Having the camera so close to your subject also poses another problem which is that most of the time it does take away a lot of the light from the subject and in turn you have to bump up that ISO and that lowers the quality of the image. So to kind of combat this issue Canon did build into the camera a little light at the front of the lens. This light has two different strengths, there's a weaker one and a stronger one. However I still feel like the light is just a little bit too dim and I wish it was a little bit brighter. The light can definitely be very helpful especially for super macro photography. Here are some photo comparisons of the light off and then set to the two different settings. The camera settings are the same in all three images so you can see what a difference the light makes. And bear in mind that having the light on does drain the battery a lot faster. The build quality of this lens is actually pretty decent, it's made of like really nice plastic. The mount of the lens is also made of plastic but I don't think that's a big issue in this lens as it only weighs 130 grams. This lens is very small and very compact. When not in use you can collapse it which makes it a lot smaller and perfect for travel. However, I feel like having the lens collapse can be a hassle sometimes, especially when you just want to take out your camera and take a photo of something really quickly. Having that extra step of having to twist the lens out can cost you a photo. Another downside to this lens is that it has the lowest f-stop at 3.5 which means that the background blur is also not particularly good, especially when you want to take portraits and like everyday photos. Here are some examples of what the background blur looks like from this lens. The EFS equivalent of this lens has the lowest f-stop at 2.8, which gives you just a little bit more usability in darker situations. On the plus side, this lens does have the Canon's hybrid IS, which can come in very handy when you're taking photos handheld and video as well. Which brings me to the point that you can use this lens for video as well. However, it is very difficult to get shots on the super macro mode. Here is a little footage sample. I filmed this with the M50 on a gimbal, and I do have to admit that it was actually pretty difficult which you can probably see from how wobbly the footage is. I would have ideally filmed this on a tripod, but I do not have anything that would be short enough to allow me to get close to the ground to get the shots that I wanted. Even with the IS and the camera being on a gimbal, the footage is still very jittery because of just how close the lens has to be to the subject. 
but with enough planning on how you can get the camera and the subject still, you can definitely use this lens for video as well. In terms of focusing, I've not had any problems with this lens on the macro mode. The lens has the STM stepping motor, which makes it very silent. However, I feel like the focusing is a lot slower in the super macro mode, and it makes it extremely difficult when you shoot handheld. By the time I decide on my framing and I want to take a photo, it takes a really long time for the camera to focus on the subject. And by that time, I end up moving the camera because I'm working so closely to the subject. You can see in this clip just how much the focus is hunting, especially that there's a moving subject as well. For super macro photography with this lens, I definitely recommend having a tripod just to take out that one variable of the camera moving. Overall, in my opinion, this is a very unique lens from the EFM lineup, and I would highly recommend it, especially to those of you who love to just experiment with photography. Despite its few limitations, this is a very versatile lens and has a lot of applications. It is just a very fun lens to use because it gives you a very new perspective on the world around you. Whenever I use this lens, I always have a lot of fun just because I can see all the textures and details that I normally wouldn't be able to. Anyway guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll answer them. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook to see more of our work and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.